Good evening, welcome to the monthly meeting of the Rec and Parks Advisory Board. Um, for Thursday, we'll start with a roll call. Oh, excuse me, I have a call to order tap, and then we'll have a roll call starting to my left. Don D. Graves. Joe Longobardi. Greg Weaver. Glenn Larner. Veronica Johnson. Awesome, 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 awesome. Um, with that roll call, thank you, ma'am. We'll have um, a motion to approve the minutes for August 4th. Make a motion to approve the minutes for August 4th the way they're written. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, no opposed, the minutes are approved. Um, for new, new business, we'll have a brief for on the Shannon Farm Master Plan. Mr. Shepard. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. You, you know, we've been um, at Shannon Farm for not quite some time, but a good bit of time. It's a beautiful piece of property there at, uh, on off a long road uh, next adjacent to the uh, homegrown market there in Lexington Park, Gate 3 of the Naval Base. It's, um, that property is uh, 212, uh, 212 acres, uh, direct access to the water, and uh, but it's going to look like that we're going to be walking to the water. Uh, have a have a surface there that's for uh, that's a handicap accessible that gets us there, with a maintenance road along with it too. And we're going to have to work that out with the uh, HOA there. So that's part of it. But uh, what a place! Um, so a master plan. So let me say this: what what's a master plan? A master plan allows us to assess future you know, current and future needs, then come up with an action plan, evaluate feasible ways to get it done, and that's what we've been doing, working with uh, Kyle of A. Morton Thomas, and then to find out long-term budget or phased-in approach in that. So really your master plan isn't your design all together, it's that big, uh, big view picture of what's there, what the possibility is, is, and what can be done. So in working with Kyle Monday, she's on, you know, online with us there, She's going to be doing a presentation. And what I'd like to do is um, you would, tonight, you would hear the presentation from her just to there. You will ha get a copy of the ma draft master plan and look with. And then we come back in October for concurrence of the plan. Because way too, you know, a lot of information. And so that gives you a chance to look at the plan, read it, hear about it, hear from Kyle, and we'll answer some questions. And then we can begin to uh, move into uh, October for uh, concurrence or not, and um, taking your information questions you have and some input. Does that sound fair? Yes, sure. sir. Okay. So Kyle, are you with us? I am. Hello. Okay. Kyle Mundy, A. Morton Thomas, been with this project for the last two to three years. And uh, here we go, Kyle. You'll lead us on through the presentation. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, as Arthur said, I'm Kyle Mundy from AMT Engineering, and this is a presentation of the Shannon Farm uh, Park Master Plan. Uh, the park is a 385-acre parcel located on Long Lane in Lexington Park, Maryland. In November 2014, Shannon Farm was acquired by the commissioners of St. Mary's County through a partnership with the Maryland Department of Natural Resources and the United States Navy. St. Mary's County acquired the land with the intention of building a new community park. Um, attached to the land was a deed of conservation that outlined the easement purpose and allowable activities um, that may occur on the property. The parcel was designated as a conservation easement in the interest of preserving habitat, man maintaining rural character of land, and limiting development in the area. Um, under this agreement, agricultural uses and activities and recreational uses are allowed, um, specifically low impact recreational Outdoor activities such as hiking and picnicking are permitted, but um, most other active recreation is not allowed. Um, as Arthur said, the parcel is located near the intersection of Three Notch Road, um, south and east of the Naval Air Station at Patuxent River. Uh, the site is currently undeveloped and heavily wooded with large swaths of wooded wetlands in the interior of the site. Um, there are approximately 66 acres of wetlands on the property. And just so you know, um, filling in wetlands is prohibited, including for recreational purposes. Uh, on this drawing, please note uh, the METCOM line in blue and the critical area line in red. 
Um, <clears throat> so the Shannon Farm parcel is currently an undeveloped lot of land. At present, there are no official uses. However, people use it illegally um, to both drive ATVs and to hunt. As I previously stated, um, most of the site is forested and forested wetland. Um, west of the Metcom sewer line is an upland mix of oak, hickory, and pine forest. Um, and then to the east is a mixed uh, oak and pine wetland forest with pockets of um, non-wetland areas. At the far eastern end of the trail alignment, it's an early successional stage forest that is mainly consisting of sweet gum trees. The forested areas are in good condition and are relatively undisturbed, except for the sewer line right of way and ATV trails that wind through the property. And here are a couple images of the existing conditions of the site. Um, of the 385 acre site, approximately 222 acres are located within the critical area. Um, it is within an area known as the Resource Conservation Area, or RCA, and um, the land uses are most restrictive in those areas. Um, there are a lot of performance standards that address lot coverage, forest and developed woodland retention and replacement, construction on sleep, steep slopes, stormwater management, and habitat protection. Um, it's important when developing an area within the RCA to maintain as much forest as possible. Um, Additionally, there is floodplain on the site. However, the beach access does not appear to impact it. So we'll gloss over that. Um, I'm gonna walk you through some of the environmental restrictions so that you can see why we designed the park the way that we did. Um, steep slopes and erodible soils can lead to runoff that will eventually pollute the Chesapeake Bay. Um, within the critical area, development of slopes over 15% is prohibited. Luckily, um, the steep slopes shown here in blue are located to the west of the property outside of the critical area, so that did not impact the design. Um, highly erodible soils are shown in orange and are on the western side of the site. They correspond with the steep slopes. Um, additionally, hydric soils shown in blue are often related to wetlands and really limit um, what you can construct on them. There are many ecosystems within the site, um, but they're especially riparian forests. These have uh, relatively undisturbed and large tracts of forest, which support uh, the breeding populations of forest interior dwelling birds, such as warblers, flycatchers, woodpeckers, um, other endangered species. And um, because of the pristine nature of this lot of land, it's actually one of the best examples of um, these plant and animal communities in Maryland. So this is an exhibit that was given to us by the Navy um, that provided the location of the wetland as they had delineated it. We were not allowed to develop at all within the boundaries of this wetland exhibit. Um, and that includes minimal impacts like trails or boardwalks. <coughs> Wetlands that exist along the trail alignment begin just east of the Metcom sewer line and extend across much of the alignment to the east, ending near the area of successional forest. Um, these wetlands are primarily non-tidal forested wetlands. Uh, since the Chesapeake Bay sits at the far east end of the trail alignment, there are two additional types of wetland, um, intertidal and subtidal wetlands that can be found on the east side of the site. Uh, the wetlands along the trail alignment appear to be in good condition and are relatively undisturbed. The lack of development on the site has allowed the wetlands to remain and um, natural plant and animal communities to flourish. Since the park is located on the Chesapeake Bay, there are two major concerns related to water that need to be considered when designing the park, um, shoreline erosion and sea level rise. Um, we're looking at a picture of shoreline erosion that is actually from Shannon Farm that was photographed by um, a county citizen and sent in to us. There are two primary reasons for shoreline erosion, and that is wave action and sea level rise. Um, two ways to deal with erosion are living shorelines and breakwaters, and that would be a great um, option for a site like Shannon Farm. A living shoreline is a protected, stabilized coastal edge that's made primarily of natural materials such as plants, sand, and rocks. Um, has the benefit of providing wildlife habitat 
uh, purifying water, buffering floods, reducing erosion, um, and attracting wildlife. And then breakwaters are um, hard barriers that take the energy out of the wave impact so that the wave hits the breakwater harder and then gently approaches the shore. Both of those measures will help reduce shore erosion. Um, with sea level rise becoming an increasing threat to coastal Maryland, a study was conducted by the state in 2018 that found um, the sea will likely rise between 0.8 and 1.6 feet. AMT studied sea level rise models for Shannon Parks specifically. And um, in the spring of 2022 to assess the vulnerability of the park over the next 50 years. The results um, were the lowest rise scenario was 1.87 feet and the highest rise is 3.4 feet. So if the high scenario should occur, Shannon Farm will lose um, over nine acres of wetland and forest over the next 50 years. So it was important to keep in mind that um, that could impact the future of this park and the design. So the park vision. The vision for the park is primarily to provide beach and water access to the Chesapeake Bay for county residents that is ecologically integrated, aesthetically pleasing, and inclusive for all visitors um, despite age and ability. Um, <clears throat> so we wanted to provide beach and water access provide a multi-generational passive recreational opportunity, provide a space for gathering, provide uh, accessible pathways and site facilities, include a playground for multiple ages of children and their caregivers, and provide all of these solutions in an, envir in an environmentally sensitive way um, while maintaining the strict design requirements for the critical area. Um, so our design process, after meeting with the Department of Recreation and Parks, AMT developed two concepts based on the discussion of the park. Um, two potential entry points were considered, one from the water tower along the existing road and the second extending long lane to a bridge over the wetlands. Um, the second concept was ruled out due to cost. The first concept was explored and developed and a final concept was presented to the county and stakeholders. However, um, residents of local communities were concerned about the additional traffic that would be brought in along Long Lane and having a roadway behind their homes. So after much discussion, um, a new access road was added coming in from Three Notch Road and Homegrown Market. Um, so this is the master plan for Shannon Farm Park. And just to orient you, here's Homegrown Market, and this is Three Notch Road. Um, parking will be located near the Homegrown Market so that a hub is created and park visitors will have access to the market's restrooms and facilities. The trail featuring boardwalk sections will take visitors to the beach where there will be a gravel trail leading to beach access, restrooms, picnic areas, and a playground. Um, we spent a lot of time talking about the environmental constraints of the site, and this is how they were addressed through um, this design. Boardwalks um, were included to reduce the impact to wetlands. Um, we we're proposing that boardwalks be used across them. Um, the piers that the boardwalk will be built upon require a much smaller amount of land disturbance than an asphalt trail. And um, for stormwater calculations, MBE does not consider that to be an impervious surface. Um, steep slopes. St. Mary's County is really committed to making this trail accessible to all users. Um, the western side, as you saw from the slope diagram, did have some slopes that exceeded 15%. Um, however, with the use of one raised boardwalk and a lot of creative uh, grading, we were able to make the connection um, maintain ADA accessibility, which means it's under 5% from the parking lot down to the beach. Um, we're proposing native meadow planting in any disturbed area. These native meadows will provide habitat for native species. Um, and as mentioned, stormwater management, um, it's calculated 
and really defined by the limit of disturbance. Um, we are disturbing approximately six acres of this site. And to meet the stormwater quality requirements, we've proposed microbioretention facilities, grass swales, bioswales, and sheet flow to conservation areas. Um, which is just to say we're using all of MBE's best management practices to meet the increased stormwater quantities. So I'll walk you through some of the site features. Um, similar to other park facilities, St. Mary's County Recreation and Parks wants to be able to control access to the beach from homegrown market. There will be a manned gatehouse with an arm at the entrance to the parking lot, and um, they will most likely collect fees on the weekend and for out-of-county visitors. The main access route will be a 10 foot wide asphalt trail. Um, this trail is designed to be ADA accessible and is under 5% slope for the entirety of its length. There will be two foot wide shoulders along the length of the trail. 14 foot boardwalk is used along this access route. Most of the boardwalk segments are over areas of forested wetlands um, and the boardwalk will be set on helical piers to really minimize the disturbance to the, those wetlands. Um, as most of these more boardwalks are not over 30 inches from the ground, the boardwalk will have toe kicks instead of railings. Um, the playground that we design will be um, a multi-age natural playground with a nautical theme. The natural playground is um, a play environment that consists of elements and textures from the earth, such as um, logs, stumps, boulders, plants, um, instead of the traditional steel and plastic of um, traditional playground design. The trail was designed to be fully accessible and as such, the beach access should also be. Ramps, Moby mats, and other ADA technology will be evaluated to bring um, users of all abilities down to the beach. Um, due to the steep nature of the drop-off between the forested edge and the beach, stairs will need to be used um, to prevent further erosion from foot traffic. Several picnic shelters will be located along the gravel trail at the forest edge. Picnic shelters will be on concrete pads with tables and will be available to reserve or on a first come first serve basis. The park will include a restroom facility near the playground at the beach. There are currently no utilities such as water, sewer or electricity on the site. Um, so these will most likely have to be either pump out or vault toilet restrooms. Access for maintenance will be a key consideration when deciding what type of facility should be built. And on that note, we'll open the floor up for any questions. That was wonderful. <laughs> I don't have any questions. Thank you. So uh, one, of the, one of the questions I have, uh, that erosion area that you showed back at the beginning, is that gonna to have to be bulkheaded or how is that gonna be handled? Um, well, there are a couple different options, but what we mentioned in the master plan specifically were, um, were using the living shorelines and breakwaters, which are um, a little bit more of a green technology than uh, a bulkhead. And, uh, you know, it's designed to, <clears throat> the living shoreline really holds the shoreline in with plant roots and then the breakwaters would minimize the wave action. Um, but we would, um, when when it gets to that design phase, I think that we would explore all options, but the preference would be living shoreline or breakwater. How much how much beachfront will, will is there going to be there? Do you have any idea? Uh, I mean, exist the existing beach is the entire length of of the, the frontage. That's six tenths of a mile, that piece of property is. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And is there is there any consideration for it to be, any part of it to be uh, pet friendly? I didn't get that, what friendly? Pet, P-E-T. Oh. Well, yeah, our pets are, pets are allowed at our parks now as long as they're on the leash. Right. All right. Well, thank you, Kyle. Um, thank you, Kyle. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you. That was a wonderful presentation. I don't think there are any other questions from the board. 
So will she come back on in October for final review, or is it just be presented? It'll be staff there okay. because we're going to. And then you, you know you have a chance to put in some input too mm -hmm. uh, between now and then, and that's that's what it is. It's input to come up with the final plan. And remember, this is a this is a concept a master plan, mm -hmm. the big picture. You guys, you totally understand that, and mm -hmm. then we'll get it there, and then we'll go back to the commission with some cost estimates, and we got some more work to do on that. And then lastly, uh, Kyle, the the first time those uh, wetlands were. Um, flagged. Can you tell him who did those? <laughs> Arthur worked very hard and he <laughs> carried a lot of stakes, um, you know, the entire length of that trail. So Arthur has walked that trail at okay. least twice with me, probably three or four times. You, Philip, with other was, people. It, is it, was it Philip or Andrew? Uh, Andy. Andy, yeah, so the three of us, I, that was serendipitous. I was just there and I saw her carrying all these stakes and I said, well, do it, but I didn't know it. But time to walk in and flag it, that was a four hours just to get from that one nine-tenths of a mile to, but once you got out of that woods and saw the Chesapeake Bay, it was very well worth it. Tampa, and it was any rewarding. citizen, once they come down that trail and say, and then all of a sudden it opens up to the bay, it's going to be spectacular. I think what's, so. What's the, what's the estimated life product of the boardwalk areas? What's it made out of? That's a good question. Yeah, we Kyle. were just talking about that, weren't we? Um, we have been looking at uh, Permatrek, which is a concrete-based boardwalk system. So it, I don't remember off the top of my head what its lifetime span is, but it's pretty long. Go forget that. Yeah, we were just talking. We were just whispering about that. Thank you for thank you for asking that because we were just whispering. Thank you very much. Yeah, Mike's. Oh, sorry. So, um, thank you for for um, clarifying that. And I do want to say um, thank you, uh, Mr. Shepherd, for for clarifying that this is a draft because when most residents hear master plan, they believe it's final. Yeah. So, thank you for clarifying that it is it is still a concept plan. So, um, if there are no other questions, we'd like to thank Kyle for that presentation, and we will hear from you again. I'm certain. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks again. All right. Moving so on. I, I'll Sorry. just add in there the the master plan itself is just like some of these other things. Very large document. Mm -hmm. The last request you guys had for a large document, I yeah. dropped it in Google Docs. Was everybody able to get into the Google Docs? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I'll do the same thing tomorrow. I'll drop the master plan in the Google Docs and send it out. If you need a copy or you want a printed copy, let me know. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving right along, we have some alcohol, excuse me, some park use permits from the one, uh, the first permit is from Piney Point Lighthouse for use at the, excuse me, yes, for the Piney Point Lighthouse for use, the name of the organization is Long and Roberts Wedding. So um, I believe I need a motion. I don't need a motion. I forgot how to do this. I'll make a motion to <laughs> approve both of the uh, requests. Yeah, the first one is from, excuse me, from Long and Roberts well, Wedding, for a Long and Roberts Wedding. And then the second uh, permit is from, for St. Clement's Island Museum from the 7th District Optimist Club. So, if I can have a motion to approve those alcohol permits. I make a motion to approve those alcohol permits for both requests. I'll second the motion. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 No opposed? <clears throat> All right, I'll, I'll be signing those. I'll put that right there. Be signing that. All right, so our next item on the agenda is just some general questions um, regarding the fiscal year 24 budget and planning. Um, the board just has some questions regarding, and, and just again, some generic questions, and then we'll open it up for discussion. But um, just m the initial question is when is the actual planning period begin and or if it has started already? Thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, a great agenda item, because here we are. Uh, Christy and I met earlier this week with the um, capital improvement project team, mm -hmm. and the, we don't have the final schedule out, the budget schedule. What we know, uh, in general, October 15th, the recommended CIP Absolutely. there. And the good news about that is the October meeting, I'll come back with this master plan and staff's recommendation for CIPs. So you'll get that before, you'll get a chance to review that before we put it, send it in for staff right. recommendation to the, what's called a CIP team, mm -hmm. public works, recreation and parks, uh, economic development and public schools. And then we put those requests in, but you'll have a chance to see staff's 
recommendations at the October meeting, okay? Perfect. Those were then, the general, then the operating budget, what, what happens there, that one's, that one's a little later in the year. Um, the planning starts now, but we don't, we don't come close. Probably be at the November meeting would be our recommend, some, some major recommendation. That probably the best thing to do for you would be the what we call essential cost changes. Mm. Not what you, and that's what the county asked for us. So, you know, well, let's say we have a $4 million budget and we're saying, hey, here's some new things things that are equal up to 250,000 and that's probably what you want to know anyway but you will answer any question you have mm -hmm. so you're looking about November because it's right it's in the new year before we submit to the county our recommended uh, staff recommended budget to the county okay Perfect. to the county finance and thus to the commissioners and then the budget work sessions generally begin in March for the general fund. I, you know, I can't, I'll tell you in October the exact. Well, we'll give you a copy of the schedule as soon as we get it at our next meeting. But uh, I believe we begin before the new year with the CIP, or at least get commissioner direction mm -hmm. priorities of the CIP. Okay. Well, you've answered actually all three of my questions. Okay. Sounds <laughs> um, good. Board members, are there any other questions for Mr. Shepard on the no. budget planning? No. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, sir. Um, okay, moving right along. Discussion of CIP. Wait, I'm looking at the wrong agenda. Sorry, Christine. Christina. <laughs> oh, no, that's right. Um, we just like the board would like some information on RP two one zero two, the park planning grant. Um, obviously, this is a, a, a new CIB um, introduced, not new, but visible to us. So, just some general questions on the description of what this what this um, project is, um, where the source of the funds were, and what is the relationship to any additional projects that's listed. So just so you know, in the background issues of this board doc item, all these answers are there for you, but this is the funding for the Land Preservation Parks and Recreation Plan, so that master plan document. Mm -hmm. um, every year we apply for a $25,000 grant to the Department of uh, natural resources uh, for the, for to go towards the next master plan document. So um, obviously we just expended those accounts now with regards to having the plan we have. And then from this point forward, the $25,000 a year will go to the 2027 master plan update. Um, and as you're aware, just going through this process, the master plan is that overall concept plan for everything that operates inside of recreation and parks. Okay. Um, so all those citizens meetings, all those surveys, that kind of thing. Right. So has the LPPR, that is that still in draft or has that been finalized by? It's been adopted by the county commissioners. It is the, at this state now and we're waiting for okay. the final approval. That's what I thought. Okay. Awesome. So in other words, it's, the county's done with it. It's uptown. Okay. Perfect. 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 All right. Any, any questions from board members? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, moving right along. We also had some questions for the PL2101, the St. Inigo's Boating Facility um, project. Same questions. Um, what are there any relationships? Is there a relationship to this project, to any additional projects? And um, where is the source of the funds for this particular project coming from? This is a standalone project um, to make facility improvements to St. Inigo's Landing. Um, boat launch. Um, originally, there was a $250,000 grant through DNR through the Waterway Improvement Fund. Mm -hmm. That was for improvement of the finger piers and the sidewalls. And we're actually currently um, applying for the a second $250,000 grant through Waterway Improvements. Um, to do some dredging and the concrete pad um, improvements to the same facility. And that will go in front of the Board of Commissioners on Tuesday the 13th. Okay. And what I just want to add to that, that um, St. Indigo's Landing, I don't know how many of you have been there, Big Beachville Road and St. Indigo's Landing. That's, oh, that. Yeah, that's, that, you know, boat ramp there. That's what we're repairing. But that's a recent, has a nice, to give you an idea, if you're in that southbound run, if you pull in there, you'll see a good living shoreline. That's all I wanted to tell you. Uh -huh. And that's exactly what Kyle was talking about besides the rock revetments where the living shorelines that, that uh, minimize the erosion. So I just want to give you that tip. Saint, uh, the public landing has a good living shoreline for your view. 
So is there is there um, collaboration from recreation parks with any other agency in the county to restore that, or is it all just this particular project? Because I noticed it has a PL, like you said, public landing. So is there con is there collaboration? Yeah, you know, a lot of times with soil erosion, public works gets involved okay. in this because they're working on soil erosion which right. is down at the uh, Pawnee Point Lighthouse area. Um, took that entire, because that's a huge project. Here at the Living Shoreline, we took care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, we took care of ourselves, but we, we do partner with Public Works. Okay, that's right. Well, and, and keep in mind, too, that anything like this has to go through the permit process with mm -hmm. Lugum. So you're talking about Maryland Department of the Environment, right. the Critical Area Commission. All of those things are going to be done through that permitting process, let alone all the surveys that we do. Right, perfect, perfect. That's good to know. I remember growing up using that. <laughs> That boat landing. <laughs> we brought jet skis there. So that's good to know. A good reference. Thank you. All right. Yes. <laughs> uh, any comments on board members before we move forward? No. No? All right. All right. Moving right along. Um, we have an ad hoc committee and a report from the ad hoc committee. Um, before we move into discussion and a report from the ad hoc committee, um, the, we'd like to address um, an amend amendment that was passed at the last month's meeting. Um, so um, to do that, let me find my language. To do that, I just want to reiterate on behalf of the board that we the board recognizes that any actions and motions coming from the board should not be directed to the department, but our, recommend, our recommendations and motions should be directed to the county commissioners. So the purpose of amending that motion will do just that. Um, correct the, sorry, correct the, um, instructions or the recommendations of the motion from the department to the county commissioners. So with that being said, I'd like to open the floor. Oh, here we go. Um, I make a, a move to, uh, to amend the previously passed motion for recreation parks to conduct an energy audit test at one of the sports complexes to test methods of lowering the power demand through staggering light usage implementation in 15 minute windows, rather than turning all the lights in a facility on at one time. So the amended motion will be to move to, to recommend to the county commissioners to to suggest or to direct the Recreation and Parks Department to perform the energy audit test at one of the sports complexes to test methods of lowering the power demand through staggering light usage implementation in 15 minute windows rather than turning on, turning all lights in a facility on at one time. So I hope everyone could understand that. So I'd like a second or discussion. How about we do a discussion first? Does everyone clear on what the amendment is? I'm clear what the amendment is, but uh, I think that perhaps before you finalize that that motion that uh, you hear the report uh, to be presented now, mm -hmm. tonight, and then see if there's any other words that you'd like to use in that motion. Right. I don't have a problem with the way the motion reads, but other members may feel that it needs to be a little more clarification. Right, so we move to have a, a, a first and a second and then we move to discussion and that's when we can we can do that that business. So I'd like I have a second to that amendment of the motion, the original motion? I'll, I'll second that. All right, now we can move to discussion to encourage and or <clears throat> modify the language. I'll open up for, for board members for discussion. Okay, so uh, <clears> the <throat> first thing the uh, <clears throat> First thing I'd like to point out uh, in the sheet that I gave you, uh, <clears throat> going down one, two, three, four, fifth one down, one thousand fifty-six dollars and, and four cents. Uh, that should not, that's not a ball field. That's a soccer field. If you want to make that change, I realized it uh, later today and didn't didn't get it changed. Okay, so that that's a soccer field. All right, <clears throat> so. Uh, what has been done uh, since that uh, <clears throat> email went out uh, <clears throat> and the last presentation is that uh, I think there needs to be a further explanation as to how A and B work in relationship to the billing, all right? Uh, and <clears throat> the 
first <clears throat> the first item on there, the bag of ball fields. Uh, under under plan A, uh, <clears throat> the bill was six hundred fifty dollars and forty six cents. All of these examples are taken from the billing period for July. I received other bills, but a lot of them was for, for August. So I only did these 12 uh, to fit in, fit into a, uh, to an amount of dollars that would be saved. So very simply bag it, <clears throat> that's two fields. Uh, and then this, the column B, uh, plan B, had we, taken measures to create a reduction in the power surge, the savings for that bill would have been the last column. And that goes right on through uh, every example that's given on all 12 of the ball fields and soccer fields and football fields. So, <clears throat> Walking, walking through them, I'm not gonna walk through every one of them. Uh, it's not necessary, I don't believe, unless anyone wants me to. So very simply, the bill for the month of July in these facilities in column one, <clears throat> had the power surge occurred where we would have been billed under the lesser plan, uh, this column two and the savings on each on each one of those bills would be in column three. Okay. So that comes up to two thousand six hundred four dollars and fifty five cents for those facilities only for the month of July. <clears throat> now, if we were to continue to walk through that reduction of power surge, which was previously discussed at came up with a motion. Uh, if it gets started immediately, the way this works is here. If you, if we installed uh, a uh, delay device in every other pole, the lights would go on 15 minutes later after the request. So if an individual wanted want to use the field, wanted to full power, full lighting at eight o'clock, then the request would go into 745. <clears throat> Subsequently, all the lights would be turned on just like they are now by control link. And the other half of the lights would come on at eight o'clock giving full, full power to that particular facility. The uh, demand reduction, as you can see here, is significant. This is a very slow month. We're gonna come into the, <clears throat> to the uh, October and November where every facility has peak. November is the peak for every one of the facilities in all of our campuses, all right? <clears throat> so, you're going to see an immediate reduction in the bill if it's installed mm -hmm. in October, November, whenever, whenever it goes through in a particular facility. So <clears throat> what I also did is took uh, last November's two peak months. I just did two facilities. I did the four baseball fields which is the on the uh, example I gave you the 266208, and I <clears throat> I uh, asked for from Smeco. Uh, I asked him to do a calculation for November of 2021. That bill came to three thousand two hundred and three dollars and two cents. All right, had we been under the lower plan of power surge, the bill would have been $2,037.19, which means that particular month, there have been a savings of $1,165.83. In November of last year on the one soccer field for 2021 November, the bill was $1,908.09. 
going under the lower plan that would have been established after power surge uh, uh, was reduced. <laughs> It would have been $1,205.95. That's a savings of $702.14. So uh, I think those those two figures together, uh, what come to about 1800 some dollars just for two facilities last November. Mm -hmm. uh, it serves no purpose to go through any more examples than that. Uh, I just took the two highest j just to give that example. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see that it's the same parallel of savings as about a third from July. These figures I'm showing from July and the same thing would have occurred uh, in November. And each, each month basically <clears throat> with a power with a power surge um, being taken care of, you're going to see a reduction right away of about a third. Mm -hmm. Okay. That being said, once a new norm is created under the Plan B billing, mm -hmm. which is <clears throat> which takes 11 months, that reduction is even going to be greater because then the billing uh, will be reduced even more where we could build that in A. So some of the confusion can be, if you're looking at this, and I had to get a lot of clarification on myself, that's why I'm taking time to explain it, okay. is that the odds are we'll never be, you'll never be in a position of getting billed under Plan B. Because Plan B is established to, <clears throat> to create the energy that, that you're telling SMECO that you may need at a peak time. Okay. So the goal is to reduce A with a power surge, okay, mm -hmm. uh, which is where the problem comes in. So mm. uh, I don't want it to be confused with the A and B billing, okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because the further you drive down the initial power surge right. under the billing process of That's A, continues to reduce B, okay? Right. So, uh, <clears throat> An example might be, and, and uh, I have one here. Let me get it real quick. Uh, uh, let's see. This is uh, Bud, Bud's Creek ball field lights, okay? Uh, there's two bills up there from Bud's Creek. Uh, <clears throat> so the both these bills for the month of July were... Make sure I'm quoting. Yes, from the month of July, actually got billed under B instead of A. All right. So here's what I'm trying to show you okay. in relationship to this A and B billing cycle. So there was no usage in either one of these two facilities. So there was nothing to be billed under A, so you got billed under B, mm -hmm. and subsequently, here's how those figures worked out, and I'll just give you one example. So uh, the energy demand and the distribution demand combined came to $256.73, and the, and the bill that, was, that had to be paid was $277.94. So all you're doing is paying for energy and distribution demand when oh, you okay. had zero use. Right. So the end goal by the power surge is to reestablish the norm of B in order to bring that down. Mm -hmm. All right. So in this particular park, uh, there's uh, the, the norm of demand is very very low to begin with. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the reason. But you're paying for a very large. Uh, energy demand and distribution demand. Uh, I mean, for this particular park, it's too. Yeah, you know, it's it's a large. It's a large number. Okay, so whether it's the smallest used operation or campus or the largest, okay, the the goal is to uh, reduce the power surge mm -hmm. uh, in order to save money. Okay, mm -hmm. so. Uh, <clears throat> the cost for the delay devices are $350, and uh, I understand that uh, the contract for uh, the electrician that uh, the county uses for R&P uh, is $125 an hour. Uh, and talking to 
the engineers at uh, uh, Control Link, the, it takes less than an hour to put one of these units in. Oh, okay. So if you had a, <clears throat> uh, a football or soccer field with four lights on it, mm -hmm. uh, you'd, be, you'd be looking at about uh, uh, $1,000 cost to do that particular field. To run the test, okay. Uh, Two, two uh, relays at 350 and another uh, $250 for electrical work, which is on the high side for installation. Now, another question that uh, I had uh, was <clears throat> these delay devices uh, in, in installing them and using them uh, became the obvious, okay? Uh, this is this is not something that's just come up for our facility. This is a stock item with them. Okay, this is so this is something that happens all the time, mm -hmm. all over you know the country, so to speak. Okay, so uh, it's not something that's that's brand new. It's right. it's been around for a long period of time, uh, and uh, <clears throat> the uh, the next step I'd like to go into is. Uh, uh, I, I did a, I put some figures together that would mean that if we did every campus, every facility, it would probably be somewhere of around $25,000 uh, to campus. install, for, no, not per campus, for all the campuses we have. Okay. Oh, okay. Would be around $25,000. I don't think I figured it wrong. I believe I'm very close to that figure, okay? So if you took the savings just from July and you multiplied it out, just saying that was the norm for 12 months of the year using July mm -hmm. at, at $2,600, okay, you'd be, you'd be looking at uh, $31,200. Mm. And of course, there's, there's some lower months and of course right. there's some a lot higher months, more higher months than lower months I might put out, point out. So, uh, from a cost cost point of view, it's it's a good thing uh, to be looked at. Right. Uh, now, there to me, and I'm not. This is only in other conversations that have come up that I hear, you know, attending board meetings with the directors. There's uh, some money uh, that's uh, around from the American Rescue Plan. Okay, so. Uh, that there could be some there could be some consideration to ask the commissioners to consider that investment without interrupting any other plans that may already be there in the budget. I don't really know how that works. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, I, I viewed that I viewed that as an option to pay for it. Uh, there are some other things that, as I continue to talk to Smeco, that may be interesting uh, for the commissioners to uh, investigate, I guess, uh, and other aspects of county government uh, as far as refixturing uh, buildings and so on and so forth, uh, uh, older facilities or upgrading facilities, including the older lights that are in our parks. Uh, uh, you know, we have older lamps uh, instead of all, I think, I think out of 21, 10 have LEDs and 11 do not have LEDs. So there's a program that's out there where if they were to be replaced, uh, SMECO pays for 80% 80, 80 of the bill and uh, county government would pay for 20% of the bill. Mm -hmm. uh, now that would not only be part of the, of relamping you know, fixtures as time goes on, because this is not something I'm told from Sneco that's going to shut down tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You follow me? But there is a window there of opportunity that that needs to be uh, sought out. So, uh, <clears throat> also in in the conversation, just to look at where this could go outside of just our, our own uh, initial looks, uh, lo looking at things, just for our ballpark considerations. Uh, uh, the one gentleman told me that uh, Calvert High School in Calvert County uh, just redid 
uh, Calvert High School with LED everything in the entire complex. That's that's the oldest high school in the county, mm. and uh, just redid it. And of course, if you've ever experienced the change of where everything's LED, it's much brighter, yeah. so on and so forth. So uh, there's other there's other uh, uh, metropolitan uh, uh, counties that are that are you know, taking advantage of this, this big savings. Uh, um, I want to try to come up with uh, reaching out down the road what this might look at from a savings point of view uh, just in one year. Uh, the conservative figure that I had was uh, $50,000. I, th I, I think that you're probably looking at $70,000 and up. Uh, if, if this was savings, be, savings, yes, okay. uh, savings, uh, for, for, uh, for Rex and parks on, on the campus as if it was that's to be just one at. agency. So of course, pardon, I'm saying that's just one agent, one department. So, okay. Right. Right. So, uh, I guess at this point I'm open for questions. That's a lot to unpack. Um, <laughs> honestly, what I, what I received um, was another motion and another another ask I should I would say for the county commissioners out of all the information thank you for all that information you gave us and and what I received was an actual n a, another motion so we actually have a motion right now to just test um, and the information you provided us supports that motion to request the commissioners to direct the department to run just this energy test because there obviously are some cost savings that can occur. But with the additional information you gave us regarding the LEDs and a long-term look at cost savings, that seems to be, to me, and I don't know about any other board members, but that seems to be another motion, um, another ask, I should say. Well, I would is that point your intention? Out, I would point out to the chair the big emphasis is is that for lack of a way of putting it, based on the peak time we're going to come in, October, November, November is the time, immediately when November happens, if something's done for that month, prior to that month, where the delay devices are put in, mm -hmm. you're going to see an immediate reduction in every facility for the month of November which is going to be extremely significant because that's the biggest use, okay? Right. So the bill starts getting reduced every month as fast as you get them in. Right. And in all facilities, we're coming in to the busiest time. Right. It's, it starts now in September. It starts getting a little darker. October, obviously, they like savings time and ends in November. Right. And, and, uh, and pointing out that it, it, it's all sports. Yes. This is not any favoritism to a particular sport, uh, you know, football's coming up, soccer, it's all sports, <clears throat> all users, every light system benefits by this consideration to, to do this. Right. I, I'm going to add a few things and kind of just go back to the, ge the genesis of all this because I, Don d did a tremendous amount of work on this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think the bottom line is it has to do with sports teams being charged too much money to use lights. That's what all this is about. And so when many people have questioned the amount of money that we're paying compared to our neighboring counties, um, you know, it was a, 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 a the need for an explanation of why we're paying so much and why individual sports teams and organizations are paying so much for lights. Um, and so, you know, for me, um, it, it's more of a question for the county commissioners of what they can do to lower those fees, mm -hmm. period. Now, what Don did with all this was almost do a lot of the legwork mm -hmm. to explain a way that the county can run more efficiently to lower those costs. But again, I think most people don't care if that is not seen on the front end for the for the teams and the organizations that are paying those fees. So for me, that's the most important component of all of this is what can the county do to lower the fees charged to individual teams and organizations for the use of lights. Um, and I think that, you know, with the, with the work that Don has done with SMECO, um, you know, he's kind of represented some very factual things that can be done. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, it's 
it's a matter of the fees being decreased for the sports teams that are paying for the u individual use of lights. Uh, so that's just my two cents that I would add because I think that's sort of how this whole thing right. started in the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I yeah. agree. I would agree with Joe's remarks, but I, I think that uh, one of the things that I learned out of all these conversations with uh, the environmental impact that uh, is out there with all these things, you follow me? Uh, it means that the, uh, the reduction in all the fossil fuels that are being used, you follow what I'm saying, to, to create energy, mm -hmm. uh, the more we work, uh, to, to lower things, then the better it is all the way around. So, yeah, right. so there's a lot of other benefits that uh, have been explained to me. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the big thing is uh, not so much take what I'm saying, you know, uh, as gospel. You follow what I'm saying? I mean, I, I have the names and who I've talked to. It's it's really. If it were brain surgery, I wouldn't have been able to do it. It's, it's really that simple. Okay, so uh, if it's easy enough for us to understand, it's easy enough for everybody to understand. And uh, really uh, complimenting uh, Smeco uh, to, for, for Miss Walker, for Brian, for Nicole. Uh, you know, these are professionals. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so for me... And uh, give any other board members a, more, a chance to respond or provide comment. No, no. For me, for me, it's uh, like Joe said. What we're really looking at is the fees. Mm -hmm. Okay, how we get there, the people don't care. The people, I mean, they, I understand what he did. Mm -hmm. The people don't care. The county should use that information and go with that. Right. Our biggest thing is lower the fees. That's, mm -hmm. what, that's what everyone's been asking us to do is lower the fees. Don gave them a reason to lower the fees. Mm -hmm. So our motion should be, let's lower the fees. Let's try to figure out how to lower the fees, where right. we can lower the fees in, in parks and recs. That's what we're really trying to do. For All lights. this other information is great. Mm -hmm. It should be turned over to the director. Mm -hmm. The director should go out and... Uh, my well, thing, we recommend thing, to, the, to, the to the commissioners to ask... Commissioners, to, to the commissioners, yes. the commissioners should say, hey... We see that there's light there's savings yes. that can be made, not just through parks and recs, but throughout the county. Yeah. If we do, are they doing the buildings the same way? Are they turning all the building on at one time? Does that make a difference? Mm -hmm. All those different things Don talked about. Right. Like you said, there's all a lot of different things, not just ball fields. Now, so that information should be used. Hopefully, it'll be used by our county commissioners, mm -hmm. and they are listening to what we're saying right, right today. And that, that's what we do. But what we really need to do is find out. At the end how, of the day, got it. Yeah, at the end of the day, how to get our fees lower. Got it, got yeah. it. So again, uh, thank you. And again, I agree, I, I agree. And, and I did, again, I did hear two motions. Um, one, the information that you provided us is compelling evidence for this motion that we've already agreed to. We're just discussing it. So that, that seems to be the immediate, um, the immediate action to request the county commissioners to direct the, the department to perform this test so we can see that cost benefit, right? So then my second, the second motion that I heard was um, seeking um, the leftover funds from the ASR, the ASA American Rescue Act to perform this test. Is that, did I not hear that correctly, Dawn? Well, I, because I it will, the department will incur some cost to perform this energy test, so. Well, it's not it's not a test if you go through with it. Right. It's, it's something that's going to be done. Right. It's no longer a test. It's, you know, I mean. I hear you. Every, every person I talk to a SMECO, to just be clear, mm -hmm. uh, one person may say a significant reduction. Another person may say a big reduction. That, you know, this type of thing. But the point is that. Every, every person from SMECO is saying, you're going to see a big reduction. And one third just off of the old prices is a big reduction already. And that's only going to get better. Uh, that's and, and, and I hear you and I agree. And, and I, I, I'm not invalidating what SMECO has said. But, you know, there there is an agency here. There's a department here. So yes. in order for them to verify and validate um, what's being said, this action has to happen. 
So, or this this test, or this this information needs to be validated. So, instead of the board recommending to the county commissioners install these devices, we are recommending to the county commissioners to have the department test these devices. And if these devices prove and support all information that you're saying, move forward with installation. Is that what I'm hearing? Because that would then call for another amended motion. I'm, I'm not, uh, yes, that, that's, that's, what, that's what you're hearing, but uh, I believe that it would be better represented mm -hmm. to the county commissioners if it came through the department based on us, our presentation. Understood, okay. understood. So uh, whether or not this analysis could go directly to the commissioners to help move that along. Mm -hmm. uh, I think would be beneficial. Mm -hmm. You follow me? But uh, uh, I think you know the, the department needs to get. Uh, I'm not saying they're not interested or any of that type of thing. I'm just saying they need to get involved based on this information to pick up the ball and run with it. You know, and mm -hmm. see if the really the presentation has any validity, you know, so mm -hmm. uh, that's, okay. I don't know if I'm talking out of both sides. Uh, you aren't, you, you aren't, but again, we as a board, we, we don't, we don't direct the department. Okay. No, and, I didn't. And, I didn't. and, and, and that, hear me that. out, hear me out. We know this. Okay. So, and, and yes, in the spirit of the information that you've strenuously gathered, yes, it would be who the department to not I, I move didn't, forward. I didn't mean in my remarks that we should be directing the department to do anything. I'm aware okay? of that. Um, I didn't mean that. I know you didn't. <laughs> I know you didn't. I know you did it for okay. sure, for sure. But as a board, this is what we, this is our part. We recommend to the county commissioners for the department to do this, yeah. to run, to, to investigate, to receive all the information that you've, that you've gathered, take it and, 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 and act accordingly. That, that's, that's what we do as a board. Okay. So again, we do have a motion. Do we need to add the, the thing that Joe said where we want to try to lower, Absolutely. lower the fees? Absolutely. That's why I'm saying that would be to, an, that would be an to, amended motion because to look at lowering the fees. Well, well, with else? this cost savings, that would cost be the, the output lower. of this act. Right. Lower the fees, I, I do right? Have one, I do have one question, if I, um, and perhaps- That's a whole nother action. Well, I do have one question. Maybe Ms. Bishop can help out. So uh, the, do the charges for these electric bills, do they come out of the, they come, that comes out of the enterprise fund? It depends on the bill in the facility. I, I don't have the answer to that question. I think what the biggest thing to, where we are is last month you made this motion to direct the department. Right, which is why that's we amended. That's what it. needs to be amended. We did. We that yeah, that's words. what we're amending. That's that's what we're discussing. For, we're amending. For me personally, I, I don't think the motions mean anything. To be truthfully honest, I think we're a public forum that we're trying to get a message out there. True. And the message is lower the cost of fees for lights. So then we wouldn't be talking. I don't to think we need to make a motion. I think it needs to be in the minutes. This is now public. The commissioners are hearing it. The future commissioners are are going to hear it. Yes. And so the bottom line is, people are saying that we're being charged too much in St. Mary's County to use lights. Now that may be accurate, they may not be accurate. Mm -hmm. The point is that is what people are saying. So at the end of the day, then it's on the department to bring that to the commissioners or the commissioners to just hear it themselves and then ask the department when they show up to say, listen, a lot of people are saying we're charging too much money. What do we need to do to lower the fees? So Don has proven a way through SMECO that the county can lower those fees or the commissioners can say, you know what we're gonna do is we're gonna eat some of the costs so that we're gonna lower the fees I, you know and i'm just throwing out stuff because I, I don't know right, right but right. that's not really for us to figure out or care or for the public to figure out or care um it's for that sediment you know we're kind of the voice of the community to say right. that is a lot of what, what the community is saying is that we're paying too much for the lights and what can the commissioners do to improve that 
period. I mean, to me, that's it's that simple. Um, you know, I, I don't feel the need to make it. I mean, I'll, I'll be on board if we want to make an emotion for that. I don't know that it's necessary because, as we said, the motions really don't mean anything. We're not a, a, a decision-making board, per se. Right. We're an advisory board. Right. Um, and so the whole, whole idea of an advisory board is to send out the message and advise. And so that's our advice for the for the director and the, the Board of yeah, Recreation right. and Parks is, is there a way that we can lower the cost of lights um, fees, period. So that's I'm that's all I need to say to get it out there. Um, I'm more than willing to hear everyone else's take on that. I don't I don't feel the need to make a motion on it, um, and I'll stop there for my point. So the purpose the purpose of making a motion is of course to send officially the voice of the board. That's why we make motions. That's why we send memos. So of course this is a public forum. Everyone's watching. The county commissioners are watching. The ca the candidates are watching. Correct. But that's the reason why we make motions, and that's the reason why we send send memos just for that reason so sure we meet every Thursday that some of them watch some of them don't we voice our opinions we give our we give our advisement and it's not for us to say director please go do this county commissioners you need to tell them to do this we speak but the the avenue and the mechanism of the motion is to say this is what we decided based on the public we want you to act Saying it is just our, giving us our opinion, but a motion is that official mechanism to ask and recommend and do our do our duty as the board. So that's that. So again, we have a second, and we have a motion. So um, we voted all in favor. All in favor, yay or nay? I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask for clarification. I, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. Yeah. I'm going to read it. If if everyone says all in favor, I'm going to read what the motion is. Yeah, I, I would say read the motion at this point, and we can okay. Go from it. So we have a we have a motion, an amended motion to um, have the com county commissioners direct the Department of Recreation and Parks to perform an energy audit test at one of the sports complexes to test methods of lowering the power demand through staggering light usage implementation in 15-minute windows, rather than turning all the lights in a facility on at one time. What we have now just discussed is. The output of this test lower the fees based on the cost, um, based on the cost benefits of this test lower the fees. Is that your understanding? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, that was that was the whole. I, I, I don't need any. Now that I'm reconsidering, I don't need any <laughs> of the extra stuff. My, if the, if we were to make a motion, mm -hmm. the motion is a recommendation to the commissioners to lower the fees for lights. Period. Right. And we'll keep, 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 keep it that simple. And I can even read it. I'm happy with that. We are amending the motion again. County Commissioner. And I agree. Discussion period. I, I, to me, we keep it that simple. I agree because we have not said all or yay, so I'm amending the motion yeah. again. I, we, as the advisory board, make a motion to suggest to the County Commission to lower the fees for light uses in, in St. Mary's County. Yeah. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There are no nays. Nay. Got an S, nay. Oh, there's a nay? Yes. Okay. There's a nay. There's one nay. The eyes the eyes have it. Nay. Don DeGraves. The eyes have it. We need to undo that. Um, okay, and do I, I'm going to watch the video. <laughs> I was going to say, we, rec we rec uh, well, we didn't. I we just want to be clear that I understand. So that motion is not. That motion was rescinded with the new motion because we didn't agree. Sure we didn't have so to do this, <clears throat> this motion here is what is the amended motion to go with, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Moving right along. Mr. Kyle has been very patient in the girl in the galley, so we will move along to the online field reservation. Mr. Kyle, please step forward. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Oh, great! Give a hand out. Oh, okay. 
appreciate you guys uh, asking me in here today. Um, at this point in time, we're just a few days under uh, seven months from implementing the online field and light requests. And so what I've put together is a, a summary from our very first date of accepting these type of requests, which is February 10th uh, until yesterday, which was the end of the month. Um, and that kind of summarizes everything from where we're looking at. Just to clarify, recreation and parks facilities or any recreation and, and parks um, that we have athletic fields, all facilities would be including the um, HOA fields that we have partnerships with as well as the school properties. Oh. So just breaking things down for you there. Okay. Total sports hours is the number of hours that we have had a sports activity at that facility. Total reservations is the total number of practices or games in a specific time slot. Total number of spaces reserved, that's our number of our unique um, facility or unique areas. So that could be a 90-foot field, a 60-foot field, multi-purpose field, turf field, a designated patch of grass as a practice area, um, any one of those. They're all unique um, areas that we assign practices to. Total number of user groups, um, that would be the number of um, individuals or organizations that we have granted permits to. And total number of rec track transactions, uh, that that's going to be the number of receipts that we generated um, as a result of the request. Uh, one transaction can contain, um, you know, a couple hundred reservations within it. Uh, just depends on the size of the request. Sometimes we get one at a time. Sometimes we'll get a whole season's worth from like St. Mary Soccer, and that will be, you know, several hundred um, reservations within it. So. Like I said, that's broken down for you pretty significant there um, in, in the short amount of time that we've been uh, operating this. And so I just wanted to let you guys uh, digest that and ask uh, for any uh, questions that I can answer for you guys. Yes, yeah, so you mentioned, I'll go first. So you mentioned <laughs> HOA and MOU, <laughs> MOUs. <laughs> um, can you explain um, what... Last one, train thought. Can you explain what HOAs uh, currently there are MOUs? I know of one, but can you just run down for us? Um, currently, we have um, MOUs with uh, Chestnut Hills, oh. uh, Country Lakes, okay, that's what I knew. Wildwood. Mm -mm. Oh. oh, we don't have an official HOA with them. Um, Down Creek? No. no? I, I think that's probably something we need to bring back to you so we can okay, cool. check our list of MOUs. Okay. Um, I thought there was one with Town Creek, but no worries. I no know worries. we just redid Country Lakes, but uh, there's that, a difference the between about, having right? an MOU right, right. Um, and, and okay, no worries in the field. No worries. So my next question would be, what would what exactly is that MOU? Does rec Recreation and Parks um, manage reservation and usage of that or what does the MOU with these HOAs entail a brief just I think each briefly. one would be different depending on what amenities the property has okay okay all right so that's cool okay questions I have a couple questions <laughs> I knew you Sorry. would <laughs> I saw your eyes perk up <laughs> I did so um I do I am interested in knowing if Wildwood is park is a um, partnership so or MOA or MOU if or we want to put MOUs on the next agenda then we can bring you that information but Kyle's online reservations it's it's not hand not the right hand topic right okay Oh, okay. That oh, for oh. this time, but I will put it on the agenda. Absolutely. Me. So, just one, one, one question then: um, Does the online field reservation receive and and direct reservations for those HOA places? Yes, the, the fields that we have made arrangements with to conduct sports activities at, we do handle the reservations for that. All right. And, and were some of these reservations in, in what we see now, right? Is what I yeah, in the bottom know. section. The all okay. facilities? Cool. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So like I said, with or without MOUs, um, the facilities that we currently schedule things are Forest Hills, uh, Forest Force Hall there in uh, Brown Road, mm -hmm. um, oh. Chestnut Hills, yeah, yeah. Country Lakes, right. and Wildwood. Okay. And so, right. as far as the MOUs, that would be something for a later meeting. Right. Okay. All right. 
sorry, go ahead. No, I would, if, are you done with your question? Yes. Okay, so I, um, so this was implemented last February, pretty much for the start of the spring season for the most part. I know it probably started in February, but for the spring was the big buildup. So ha what, what questions, concerns have you experienced through the kind of, the, yeah, anytime you implement anything like this, you're gonna go through the bugs and the issues. So what, what would be your take of how the spring went and any issues that you had? Well, I think when you're in the, uh, the public service, no news is good news. And so we, we haven't heard a lot of uh, negativity or, or criticism of the process itself. Of course, um, you know, we still have, uh, you know, user groups that, that are, are unhappy with not being able to get their, their first priority or, or first choice of, of fields. And um, but I said that that doesn't that's not affected by the, the process itself. I think the learning curve was was pretty quick. And, uh, you know, any feedback, you know, that, that we felt we could make immediate tweaks to, you know, we, we were able to tweak, you know, whether it's a, you know, a word on a form or, or a, you know, a field that, you know, was <coughs> auto generated, um, you know, we were able to work with our IT department to take care of that quickly. Uh, I think, um, you know, some of the challenges that we face is I think there's still that expectation that we're a 24 seven operation. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, we have, uh, you know, one part-time employee dedicated to this you know, and, and the expectation that, that they work, you know, well into the evening, 11 o'clock to answer calls or concerns about lights seven days a week. I, you know, I think that's a, uh, you know, that's a challenge that we're trying to um, adjust, you know, that, that persona with our, our user groups. And so obviously we would like to handle all of our business as much as we can during our, you know, our operating hours. Um, but like I said, we, we are in the customer service business and we were aiming to, to serve our user groups, but we, like I said, we're, we're not a 24 seven business. And so, uh, we are, we do do our best, uh, to meet that, you know, 48 hour uh, turnaround time. And I, and I think we've done a really good job with that. Um, you know, the, the biggest challenge is, is, uh, not so much receiving the requests and processing them. Um, it, you know, a lot of it is, you know, the, the amount of communication that we have to have uh, know, via email or, or phone um, with the requester or as a result, uh, you know, multiple parties that may be affected um, by a particular reservation or a field conflict. And, and so uh, we spend quite a bit of time, you know, problem solving and, and offering up alternative suggestions, um, you know, and that kind of sometimes holds up other, uh, you know, paperwork work in, that's in process uh, while we, you know, problem solve. And, and, and of course, um, you know, sometimes, you know, patience is not always on our side and, and we, you know, we work as quickly as we can. But I, I think overall, um, as far as the process, I, like I said, I haven't heard any concerns or complaints um, and everybody seemed to get tech savvy pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. I have a couple questions, I'm sorry. Um, so is it more of a first come first serve basis? There. So we have a, a field priority list that is uh, published in our parks policies and procedures manual that's online. It's also listed uh, directly on the application page for the permits. Okay, and then how about cancellations? Is that through the system as well? Like if a, a game, they know they're gonna be canceled, they go back in? So um, there's not a cancellation form. Uh, the user group you know, um, will send a cancellation request to our hourly staff member and that staff member will remove both. If they have a light, light request, they'll remove the light request and then they'll also remove the um, reservation itself. And so the master calendar that uh, many people refer to that we post on our website, uh, that's updated every morning uh, at approximately 8.30 a.m. Monday through Friday. So if we receive a request, you know, four o'clock today, uh, you know, we'll take that out of there and by 8.30 tomorrow, that free space will be showing up on the website. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you have, uh, are there no shows? There are no shows. With no communication to you to? Correct. Is it a lot or? Uh, well, we, we certainly, we rely on our field staff to report that. Uh, and then we also obviously will have other organizations um, report the activities of their competing organizations as well. So are there um, responses to the no-shows? For example, if, if I reserve lights tonight, 
and I don't show up, am I still charged? Um, what, what are the, what's the process? If you reserve lights and you, and you don't cancel them, they've already been pre-programmed and you will be charged the fee for that. Yeah. Uh, there's no um, fee for reserving a facility right. um, that you don't show up for, you know, unless it's special circumstances in which Recreation and Parks is providing extra staff or, you know, securing police officers for right, the right. event. Um, and in that case, we've already engaged in, in extra, you know, budget for that particular event and you will get charged regardless. Um, you know, it is important to us because we take the schedule and staff accordingly. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, we take note of no shows, and if we begin to see a pattern, pattern um, you know, we will address it with the league. Sometimes the league is unaware of that particular coach no showing. Right, right. Um, you know, sometimes it can be a variety of different things certainly it's a uh, you know that's one of our challenges is there is no penalty in place uh, to prevent no shows or, or prevent people from returning um, what they're not using and I think right. uh, you know certainly that's something that we want to examine season in and season out and, and come up with a better process it just hasn't came about to show itself clearly yet. yeah I was trying to stay away from using the word penalty or consequence but <laughs> so what is that costing us, Carl? So the it's not a the, the cost is not a new cost. Um, we diverted funds that we used um, for our hourly groundskeeper position and have dedicated that to this uh, field scheduler. And so that's just an hourly cost of approximately fourteen dollars an hour, um, including FICA and workman's comp, and that employee works thirty hours a week mm -hmm. um, for fifty-two weeks a year, and that you know is approximately twenty to twenty-two thousand dollars. So if I didn't cancel the umpires, I got to pay for them. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't. We we the only me, um, me, the only officials we contract are for our own programs. No, I didn't. I didn't mean it that way. I'm 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 using hypothetical. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we have a reservation, as you pointed out, and uh, I take time. I'm, I've got a baseball game, and uh, it's not raining. You follow me? And I, I I cancel my umpires. Okay, but I don't cancel the field reservation. Okay. So subsequently, staff shows up, and then you have to pay them, right? Correct. So my question is, do you have any handle at all as to what kind of money that's costing the department because people don't take time to cancel what they've reserved? Well, I think I'm not know, trying to put you on a spot for a number, but most of our, our parks, uh, you know, obviously have staff there that are tasked with covering the entire property. Um, and then, you know, the park is still open to the public until dark. And so in the event that one particular field has a no show, um, you know, the, the show is still going on everywhere else in the park. And so that staff member would not be you know, sent home in that event. Mm -hmm. In the event that, you know, a baseball game was projected to go till 11 p.m. and uh, you know they didn't show up at eight and there was nothing else past eight o'clock then that staff member would go home at eight o'clock and it wouldn't stay till 11 o'clock hmm. waiting for teams to show up so what I think I just heard you say is that this that really doesn't happen well certainly I think more of the quantity of staff is, is instead of you know, scheduling staff for park in the entire park is, is abandoned. Like I said, um, almost every park, you know, we have a, you know, except for our school properties and some of the off the path properties, you know, we have a staff member there to cover all activities in the park, not supervise a field. You know, they're checking the restrooms, monitoring parking, <laughs> maintaining security. Uh, and, and so enforcing field permits is just one of their tasks. And so um, we don't, specifically staff um, specific fields, uh, you know, we're staffing the whole park. Now, granted, Got like I said, it. if we have a full slate on our schedule, we may have four staff members there. And if we have nobody show up, then we've wasted three staff members. We would probably still have one staff member there yeah, because it's home. a popular park. Well, and, I see, that's what I think sorry. Dawn is asking. What is the impact of what you just said? The three staff members versus leaving the one staff member and sending the three staff members on. What is the impact and what is the cost impact of that? 
I don't have the the numbers on right. the amount of, of yeah. no shows and the right, and right, the, right. The well, but like you, but if I could correct me if I'm wrong, I, I don't. It, it doesn't sound like, and I just my knowledge of how it works that there really isn't a significant cost impact. Mm -hmm. The impact is the fact that there's people that are competing in, in requesting fields. Mm -hmm. And so there's a frustration when someone doesn't have access to a field because it was denied to find out that someone who had the permit didn't use it. I think that so I think that's the up. bigger problem, that also, which isn't, yeah, not, isn't you know, nothing that recreation parks can control. No. You know, right. The challenge is that, that um, teams will request their concern. field use uh, while their registration is still going on or even before they've even held registration. And so they're using their historical data to estimate what fields they may need based off the number of teams and players they have. And um, so, you know, they are granted field space, you know, around the time of their permit. Uh, and then it may come to be that they have far less teams and the responsibility lies on the organization to report that and, and identify that maybe they don't need all the spaces that they requested. So, and, and because they don't and, report that back to you, that's what creates the frustrations from other organizations mm -hmm. about getting the time slots that should be available, but they haven't canceled the reservations based on their needs. Is that Correct. a fair assessment? Mm -hmm. So when you issue, <clears throat> not that you're doing it wrong, I'm just saying, so when an organization requests uh, a group of fields, you know, for based on whatever the organization is, and uh, up front they say they need, uh, let's just say, three 90 foot diamonds in the demographic they're operating in, right? So they wind up with, <clears throat> with uh, a number of teams that may or may not support the need for right. three of those fields, right? Uh, so if they don't report back to you, what's what's the correlation between how many fields they feel they need and how many f field you feel they need? So if an organization comes out at the beginning and says, I want five to nine Monday through Friday mm -hmm. and Saturday uh, from eight to five, okay, and then we find out that there's no way they can use a particular segment of fields based on how many teams they have, all right? So what I would foresee is that if they don't cancel them, obviously they're tying up that space for somebody else. Mm -hmm. That can create a lot of animosity regardless mm -hmm. of what sport it is in a county, correct? Absolutely. Well, I think uh, there's quite a bit of variables that, that play into that. Um, for example, the sport of baseball, you can only typically have one baseball team playing on a baseball field because you have baseballs flying around. Football, you can fit four or five football teams on a 100-yard field. Um, the the size of the kids, and you said you could, you know, for those same four football teams, if they're peewee, they can fit on a 100-yard field. If they're middle school or high school kids, you can maybe fit two kids on that 100-yard field. And so right now we allow the leagues to have control over how they designate that space to their, their teams. And, you know, as far as you know, what the appropriate amount of practice space is, and each organization has a different amount of time they practice, you know, the number of times per week. And, and so we don't get, dive into the details of, of that with them. Um, I don't think we have the manpower to do that. Um, you know, I think one of our biggest challenges is when it comes to game time, because when you have games, you know, two teams that are practicing on field A and B, if they play each other, one of those two fields is getting freed up. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, we always, you know, it, but it's up to the lease to provide us with their game schedules and notify us, okay, we're going to be at field A so that we can free up field B, you know, for potentially another team to use. And, and so, you know, it's all about, you know, having that open line of communication, you know, from the leagues. But like I said, games, games are the big one because, you know, especially if it's an in-county thing. Now, granted, if it's a team visiting from out of the county that doesn't free up a field, but if it's two teams, you know, in a, in a rec league that are playing each other, that should free up a practice location or a game location. 
Right. So with, with all that being said, and I, I want you to understand that the remarks I'm making have uh, nothing to do with what you're doing wrong, okay? You follow what I'm saying? I, my feeling is that there's, there's, there could be organizations that have too much access, you follow me? And then they're not turning around and saying, look, I can give some of this back, you mm -hmm. follow what I'm saying? So subsequently, you have organizations that only have one practice, a week, and you have these other organizations that have three practices a week, you follow what I'm saying, for the availability of time. Uh, and that can create animosity between programs. That's the point I'm trying to make, and I think you've agreed on that, because they're not reporting back their actual need after they organize how many teams they have in a particular sport. So what do you do? Because well, it's, uh, it's, it's I, I had definitely some, not the not the department's well, responsibility, well, right? I, it, yeah. I, so here, I, here's a couple of comments on my part of it. I, to yeah. regularly has to make field requests. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I, you know, I want to I want to give kudos because I think all things considered, it went better than expected to unveil what we what you did in the spring. That's true. Um, I think. For, for, if there was a suggestion that I would have, it would be maybe giving a deadline to put in requests to anyone, you know, to know that, hey, that doesn't mean you won't necessarily guarantee not getting something. Right. But at least, and, and I'm thinking on your behalf, you have the big picture mm -hmm. before you've issued anything. Mm -hmm. And so then you know, here's the amount of teams that I'm having and organizations and so forth that are requesting a cer certain, certain location. And then you can more easily plan for what you're giving out. Because the argument that I've made is this, and it is a simple way of looking at it. If there's four teams that are requesting practice twice a week, Monday through Thursday at a particular field, it should not occur that two teams get it twice a week and two teams don't get it at all. Mm -hmm. That would be a, you know, a, a, where Parks and Recs has to come in and say, hey, in order to make this work, you each are going to get it once a week. That's right. And, and that's an oversimplification of, of what it is. But I think you're able to do that if Theory. you have that deadline per season. Now, granted, some things are fluid in there. But for the most part, your, 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 main, your sports, your main actors have specific seasons. They start on a certain date. And like you said, they should be able to make projections on what fields I have based on pre previous registrations. But then from that point, um, you're able to kind of, instead of Forecast. giving it all to them for them to have to give back, mm -hmm. you kind of can streamline it ahead of time say, here's what you need. And then the other component to that is I think the communication piece, um, you know, like I, I think I, I'm in the baseball world. I mean, my kids play all the different sports. Um, some are a lot easier than others. Like I've said, you know, I know there's a few very small soccer teams that practice in our county, but for the most part, soccer is run by one organization in the entire county. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy to say, here, St. Mary's Soccer, you have it, and then all that's in handled in-house. I'm sure you don't have anywhere near the issues dealing with soccer permits as you have with some other sports because that's handled within the organization. Um, Divvying you know, out of the field. Because they're, usage, yeah, so, yeah. So if I, have a, if I just view why that soccer team's practicing in mind, it's still the same Well, and then they don't need a baseball net diamond to practice correct, either. Correct, correct, correct. Um, um, and so, you know, so th that would be the one thing I, I know um, – for me, a lot of it, the coaches' communication has helped a lot. You know, so maybe that's a, a, something to consider is just a, 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 a communication of those that put in the permit. Because normally we figure it out. I mean, I, I, and to me, we all, for the most part, look out and work with each other. And sort of pa Parks and Rex's role is, okay, we have a conflict. I'm going to have to make the decision because they couldn't figure it out type of right, thing. Right. So um, so those, those are just sort of my thoughts on it um, because I think I do think think there's enough fields available because of course people want the prime time of what it is and that's where you kind of have to step in but I think if if there's a again if there's a deadline by getting you their requests in to kind of then and again it doesn't necessarily, necessarily guarantee anything 
other than it gives you a pretty good outlook long before it starts on how many people are requesting things. Um, anyway, that's just the one you know one input I would say from from my standpoint. I know that because I've I've reviewed the you'd ask about the order of priority. Some of it's somewhat vague. I mean, you know, I Not mean it's prioritize priority. some of it's kind of clear cut with the organizations and the pri you know the time before, but Field some of it is list. is kind of is kind of vague um, in terms of what it is. So um, you know I. I I'm fortunate I know the ins and outs of it. I think the, the problem is if I'm not if I'm not intimately aware of that, hmm. I miss the boat and I could get nothing right. if I haven't submitted in time and so forth. So that's just my my one point to maybe help out is, and like I said, that's just to help help you kind of long before it all actually starts. Um, the other question I had for you is the calendar is the greatest thing of the whole thing because you kind of can look up and see what's available, what's available. What's not, and so forth. Um, but a lot of times the calendar doesn't show that far in advance. Advance. So is there a reason why it's kind of just month to month versus? So if you, I mean, <coughs> we can certainly put it out there, but it, as you know, one month document can be anywhere from 50 to 90 pages. And, and so as you add months to that, Maybe you're going to double requests. the map size. And so um, certainly if you know what you're looking for, then you can, you can navigate quickly and, and, and do that. And uh, you know, we have no issue that we, you know, we have had, you know, several comments about that, you know, um, we have no issue projecting it out further. It's just going to be a large, much larger document. Mm. I'm curious about the field priority list. Who, who determines who has a higher priority than others? That's written in policy. If you oh. go to the policy and procedures manual. Of, of what? Of the program or the, the parks policies and procedures manual, and it was presented. I will give credit to that when when the, when this was kind of laid out and and mm -hmm. um, and it was presented to the leagues and the various teams. That that was a document that was pointed out in terms of it. I mean, it's and it's helpful, but it also it, it, there does there is some vagueness to some situations. You know, it's not it's <coughs> not perfect for necessarily knowing who would rate over someone else. Yeah, I was going to say, so there's actual, there's an actual policy that states one league has a, a higher priority to this field than, uh, than the other? Mm. Well, and, and well, it doesn't necessarily identify the league. It, no. it more, oh, the sport. It, it, the, well, no. no, no, it's more the criteria uh, like of the they've, used it, they've used it prior or, oh, okay. you know, uh, I think a, a recreational league may take Recreational precedent. versus competitive oh, based on versus based on a set maybe, of parameters. Maybe yes. kids, okay. kids over adults some, I mean, I think, you know, oh. youth over adults. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I and mean, that's some vagueness to it. But, right. I mean, it's pretty, it's thorough, but there's, know, it's yeah. still not necessarily, you know, a, there still has to be decision making that's involved, I think, on the part of recreation parks. So. Cool. Okay. Cool. I actually, uh, yeah, I, my uh, my other question would was a cost prediction, but I know that it, it may be too. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot about numbers, so I'll send an email. Cost <laughs> cost prediction. Yeah, just I mean, you're just a matter of how much. Uh, what was what has been the has there been a cost benefit for this program? Is it easier to track the amount of money that's being brought in, or is it easier to forecast money that's not being brought in? I mean, you know, those types of metrics, I should say. We're able to. Uh, have better record keeping of um, you know lights light right now lights um, and like player fees are the only two fees that we collect from leagues besides you know special fees mm -hmm. um, so certainly it's it's great to have a, a history of field usage and I think you know this time next year you know, we're gonna play maybe. around with reports but you know we're gonna be in the proactive and, and contact leagues and say uh, this is what your your usage was for spring 22 um, mm -hmm. is, is this something similar you want Want, or are you anticipating new numbers? Or are you anticipating you know something different? Um, and, and so we want to pass that data along to the leagues, and uh, you know so they can have a record of it, and you know utilize that to you know enhance our partnership. Got it, got it. You know, and I'm also looking at it as a way of using those numbers to forecast um, fund, uh, funding requests or budget requests and things like that. And I'm also throwing in a plug for our annual report. So if we could get that information, <laughs> yeah, but obviously be great. you know you can pull. Any set of data you want, you, you can see your your top user, your top you know facility that's rented. Uh, I mean, so it, the data is, is overwhelming, but it's it's okay. fantastic. Awesome, awesome. The Chancers run regional park uh, uh, baseball, <clears throat> baseball and softball fields. Uh, <clears throat> the ninety foot diamond. Uh, it has always been my understanding 
that that is a game only facility. Is that your understanding? I have not received that directive. Okay. All right. Uh, <coughs> of course, I understand that obviously with the field reservations, I mean, the renovations that are going on, there's a need for practices to be there. But uh, games, uh, uh, I've had this brought up by two, two organizations, actually three organizations that use, use that facility. And uh, the, the question, of course, right now is why is it being used as practices okay and not for games only of course my answer is that you're not in a game cycle right now you're in a practice cycle mm -hmm. and we have renovations going on <clears throat> so obviously something else had to be accommodated uh, so I think there should be some clarification to the baseball organizations uh, whether that is a game only facility or not uh, I think that's something that has to either be I would say re-emphasize it, you know, that it's games only. Uh, it's obviously better for the facility because it's a regional park in the middle of things. My history would have it that uh, <clears throat> all sports and baseball were allowed to use it, whether you were north or south of the facility, had some kind of time there in the past. So uh, the other thing from an expense point of view that, uh, that I want to know about is uh, in the elementary and the middle schools where we use, have an agreement to use their facilities, do we supply uh, portable units, porta pot units? Yes. Okay. So if, if, uh, <clears throat> if someone requested uh, any one of the facilities, I'll, you know, it doesn't matter which one, but any one of the schools, <clears throat> along with one of these blanket requests, okay, uh, that an organiza a big organization might put in, or any organization, and then wound up that you find out that it's not being used. Uh, those porta pots obviously wouldn't be necessary to have there during the fall season. Nobody's practicing on it, nobody's using it. Correct. So it wouldn't, wouldn't be necessary to have. Correct. So if someone... If, if someone's not reporting that back to you that, hey, we don't need it, mm -hmm. then the organization should understand that that's an expense that is coming out of the enterprise budget, right? Or it does that not come out of the enterprise budget. It doesn't really matter what budget it comes out of. It's an expense that is being occurred and it's not necessary. Correct. So that that's why I feel that there needs to be some kind of checks and balance in the system, all right? And I'm not sure how to do it, you know, where there's a reporting back that, hey, we don't need this, okay? Uh, and <coughs> there could be a couple schools that are close where I don't really need it all this time, so somebody is only using it one day a week and the schools are close, you can just go here and eliminate that facility during that particular season, all right? So, uh, I don't really know how to accomplish that, but it's, it's yeah. an expensive work. Uh, regardless how big or small it is, I think that again the organization should understand that you know this is this is just a waste of money, just like the payroll situation. Uh, if you've got only need one person there and you wind up with three, then it's just a waste of payroll. So uh, I don't know how to accomplish that, but that's that's something that I'm hearing, you know, from users. All right, that. Uh, had I known it was open, I would have been using it, and subsequently it's not being used, and <clears throat> there's, there's an expense going on. When, when uh, a school facility is used, is there a person from, a staff member from Recreation and Parks that goes around to see if they're being used? No. No. Okay. So that, that staff is only in the Wrexham Parks facilities, not in the school facilities. Correct. Okay. So, so what, do you, what, do you, what do you mean by that? Is that, that, that mean, well, well, that means that Typically, it's not a staff member from the schools required unless it's an indoor event. Indoor. Uh, okay, thank you. I was going to, yeah. yeah. Because I know we, we know in basketball, they're gym supervisors. Right. No, what I, what I meant or is that specifically... For each program. 
specifically what I meant is that we, we have schools that we're using their facilities, mm -hmm. okay? And <clears throat> outdoor I'm referring to, not okay. indoor, okay? Thank you, Outdoor sir. facilities, and there's there's no checks and balances on actually they how much up. they're being used. Right. And subsequently, if people aren't showing up except for one day a week, then why, why can't they be assigned party? someplace else? And Where there's more uses, right. Yeah. Well, and subsequently eliminate the need, the need for that facility instead of just having, for instance, porta pot expense out there. You follow what I'm saying? So, I hear you. Uh, I don't know how much that adds up to. I have no idea. That's a good point. So. Okay. Well, thank you, sir. Are there any other questions? I think we've... No, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> we thank appreciate you, you. Thank you for your patience for waiting after our other discussion. Thank you, Carl. <clears throat> All right, moving right along, we have the maintenance and operational manual that Ms. Bishop has kindly put on the screen for us. Where is my sheet? Um, we wanted to understand where we are. And when I say where we are, where is the department with um, in its schedule for... Um, um, performing the maintenance and performing these improvements and things like that. Okay, so this document doesn't give you a where we are. This okay. document gives you the guidelines on how we base what needs to be done. There you go, okay. there you go, thank you. So, um, and, and if you take the time to actually go through it and read through it, I think it's gonna answer the majority of your questions okay. from how we determine what these service levels are, hmm. how we came up with that, um, what each park usage is, um, high level, you know, medium level, low level, it really goes through quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. Now, you'll also <clears> notice <throat> that this manual has more than just ball fields and yep. parks, yep. you know, because obviously we're more than that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it has the maintenance standards for all of the park facilities. Um, it has the maintenance and operation standards for Nicolette Park. It's our specialized facilities in parks. So you have the spray park, you have the golf course, you have the swimming pools. Um, CSM's section of this is currently being developed now okay. um, and will be added to it. Um, this document, I, I believe the review period is every five years. It gets a complete overhaul and review oh, cool. based okay. on standards, but obviously if a new national standard comes out for the, uh, uh, we'll use the turf field, say a new national standard comes out for the maintenance of turf fields, then we can update this manual based on those national standards. Okay. Um, so you get some general ideas, those continuing questions of how do we determine this. This document yes document is the guidance. It'll tell you exactly how we do it, why we do it, what that's based on. Um, yeah, what is the, is it? Is um, this, these, is standards, it, these standards turn into the maintenance actions. Correct. So it goes down, I mean, here's your maintenance standard. Here's your methodology of how we okay, came up good. with it. Then you have a little <clears throat> chart of yes, maintenance yes, levels yes. are, level one through six. And then you go into each type of area that the parks maintain, and it tells you what level of maintenance that gets. Um, mm hmm so I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory when you go through when you start it. Start reading it. Oh. So yeah, this is this is for me. This is definitely something that I. Ooh, thank you basketball courts thank you so yeah this is definitely something that I've been uh, you know because this topic has been on our agenda for a couple of months and to be able to definitively look at guidance now is this national state federal I mean where is this guidance? It's everything okay. I mean we have to take in consideration what, you know the, the standards for the type of facility it is or the lifespan of the facility right. if there's any codes or regulations yes. that have something to do with that facility um, so yes. I mean it's all of the above yeah, so that, exactly. This is this document is something that I, I think can help me and my understanding as to when are you going to replace the fence? When are you going to change the the rim? When are you going to you know? Th so thank you. And, and it's it's it it ultimately ends up in your budget, right? When you're asking all those budget questions of how do we develop things? Well, we know when we've gone um, and inspected the area of the basketball court, we've noticed that there are several courts that have huge cracks and there needs to be an overlay right. on it. So that's how those things are determined through those inspections. Right, and, and additionally, um, based off of the requirement as to when you have to submit or repair or schedule, and then you submit that budget, that funding, and okay, okay. How often are the inspections, like I'm seeing a parks maintenance inspection sheet page 
23. Mm -hmm. How often are those inspections done? Again, if you go through here, everything has its own inspection I'm level. Like for, yeah, I mean, it, everything's a little bit different based on um, the timeline, the usage. You know, obviously parks that have a much higher usage or the amenities in that park that have a much higher usage are gonna be inspected more frequently. Mm -hmm. um, to give you one that I know off the top of my head because I know playgrounds is we inspect playgrounds once a month. Um, those are monthly inspections. But then also if somebody goes to that park for something in particular, they also go through and do another inspection of the playground. Um, so each, each amenity has its own. And if um, the community usage that the community members that are using the park in particular um, one that was brought up to me was like pickleball in seven district it has a lot of dead spots that's in the budget for <coughs> next year. okay good <laughs> and, um, but they can you know citizens how can you, any time like, like any time like i go to the park and I, I see a bench has just been broken like how how does a community member you call recreation and parks and you them. tell them yeah, they'll forward them to the right person, whether it's a, something that would be CIP kind of thing that would come to me or whether it's just a regular maintenance item that would go to the, the maintenance department. But yeah, they can call, they can email. Thank you. Sorry, I, was, I wasn't listening, Veronica. I may be asking the same question. I'm sorry. So if, if there's a, an, an as, as a want or a wish and it's not... Um, it doesn't fall into the parameters of when it should be or or addressed. How is that handled? Want like, or wish? Like okay, like um, we'd like um, our the light bulbs changed at Carver Elementary because it's dark. But according to the plan, the light bulbs don't need to be changed until next month. Well, How are those things? Can send in letters and okay, because I, I know, didn't know if that's emails what she just at any asked. time of of requests of things that they they want. Okay, so for emergencies, like um, the light fell, but I mean, you know, that's obviously an emergency change that has to be addressed right away. And say the lights were just inspected and the light isn't isn't damaged, but it's it's there's something wrong with it, but we just addressed it. Do we wait until the next inspection or do we take care of it right away? depends on the circumstance of the item. I mean, obviously, I mean, safety of course that makes sense, but I was just curious. Be, safety items are going to be prioritized. Right, right, okay. um, you know, we don't want anybody hurt. We want the park right, safe. Right, right, right. Um, but it, it really is just going to be determined. Uh, and the reason why I'm asking is because, believe it or not, I've had that question, so I just wanted to say it out loud. Yeah, I do believe you. Perfect. perfect. <laughs> these procedures are, um, like, the public can read these. Are they it, on? They're not online, only just because of... It wasn't a popular document to put mm -hmm. out there, but I mean, it's available. I'm not, it's not hidden. If anybody wants it, they're more than welcome to ask for it. Uh, we can have printed copies. Cool. But just like the rest, you know, it's big. It's a big cool. document. So they're not just printed in the office waiting for anybody. Awesome. So let me ask, so you know what, and this is a good segue into the next item on our agenda, um, the baseball field renovations. Are the baseball field renovations a part of this maintenance policy, excuse me, no. a part of that? So This is additional projects that were added to the budget with that additional infrastructure okay. money. All right, perfect, perfect, perfect. It's above and beyond those normal. Okay, great. And and we know that in November, because I lost my sheet, we received um, we received some monies from DNR. I believe it was back in 2021. Um, it was like 539,000, because of course I lost my sheet. I was well, just we curious. actually received 1.5 million dollars. The baseball field renovation project was only one of five projects through okay. that grant. Right. So, so my question is: Are we finished with all of the my, all of the items that that money was? No. All right. No. Nope. We're getting there. Okay. So um, is there... to give you an example, one of the things that was done with that grant money was some of the, the, the wellness stations the down at Lexington Manor that's Passive right. Park. That's right. Um, still to come is a park pavilion that's been right. ordered for almost a year. Um, and, you know, with the supply issues that are going on um, in the country right now, that that was a hit. Um, I'm still hopeful that that'll be um, just 
delivered and installed with all the picnic tables associated with it in November. Right. Um, so yeah, there were also, at, and I know there were the ADA upgrades, right? Right, and then the been the completed. That was all the work done at Chancellor's. The, the infill grading, the fencing, the amenities at 19 baseball fields, and then there was a portal. There was a restroom facility at Chaptico Park. Yep, and we're still going through the permitting process. That is because we're actually putting in a well and septic. It is a very extensive permitting process, so we're still waiting for that. Mm -hmm. um, we do have uh, the contractor has submitted his quotes. Everything's ready to go for construction. The purchase orders have been cut. We're just waiting on the permits. Got it, got it. So it was uh, $148,000. Uh, in, in relationship to the ball field renovations, uh, <clears throat> when that's completed, I keep bundling is, my papers is the... the <laughs> Is there an, an inspection prior to the contractor leaving the sites? I don't know that answer. Uh-huh. But I did put in what was requested, and that's up on your screen um, for completion of the projects. Lancaster, Chancellor, okay, yeah, yeah. Cecil, 5th yeah. District, and 7th District parts are complete. <clears throat> Currently, they are working at Dorsey Park on Field 1. They may actually be past that at this point since I've done that. Um, and then, obviously, they'll move to 2 and 3, Field 3 there. Um, they were estimating about two weeks to get that full amount of work done, and then they will go to Bagot Park. Um, I I added a few little other improvements in there that you didn't request, but I know we've talked about several times, so I wanted you to know the status, and that was the tennis court windscreens for um, Chancellor's John Baggett in 7th District. Um, it's actually changed at, at this point since I already did this form. That's how quickly things change for us. It right. looks like we should have them in about two weeks, um, and then Parks and Rec staff will install them. And then the netting at the turf fields that was requested at the end zones of the turf fields. Um, Lancaster, the sides by the playground have on both fields are done. Oh, yeah. um, the other sides and the other parks, um, we have the purchase orders cut, and we're just waiting for things to be delivered so those can be installed. So were, were all of these improvements um, taken from that one point? No. Okay. Some okay. of these were from the Parks and Facilities okay. CIP project. Okay. But all of the baseball um, okay. fields was, was from, from the that? grant. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's 100% grant funded. Okay. Another plug for the end report. Thank you. <laughs> all right. And this is, we, get a, we have a copy of this, right? This is for us. It's in the. Oh, it's in the. I okay, didn't great. print any copies, but it great, is in board great. docs. Okay, great. So All right. Question. Yes. The um, when the baseball fields were talked about, was Rex and Park given money to begin a process of hiring people to drag those fields? So there's two different things here. Okay. This, the the renovations, that big matrix spreadsheet, that's grant funding. Okay. The staff, oh. that that's commissioner funding. So that's it's a different place. Um, but that was approved by the commissioners, I think. For for this fiscal year, yes. So that the current fiscal year. So that should, if I'm correct, it was put out by the commissioners starting in July. this month. Or was it last month of July? July. The money, the money was available July one, but whether or not when it started being used, I don't. Know. Right. So well, those people have to be hired, and I don't. Right. I don't know where the, the process hasn't. Started. No, I don't know where that process is. And without the without the gators and all the rest of the equipment, right. I, right. I don't know if if that's no point of having employees been allowed to stuff, be spent right. or not. But whatever it is. So I, I actually I do I can't believe I don't I think have it the with estimate me. for that was that that would be in place in the spring. Okay. So that, that so you just you made a good point. All of the baseball renovations were grant was coming from grant money. Yes. I gotta remember to write that down. But all of the other renovations are part of the CIP that that park improvement. The project. wind screens and the netting are from pre, from other CIP funds. Okay. Yes. Grant money. But not grant funded. Right. Okay. So, um, is the chair done? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to. I'd like. I, I didn't mean to interrupt the chair before, uh, but uh, go, going back to the question of um, who, what the checks and balances are 
based on the improvements that are being made at the ball fields under that grant. What's, is, that, is that accountable through Mr. Copsey to do that? Then see that I, I don't know what you refer to as checks and balances. Well, for instance, uh, let, let's say that uh, in a particular park, and uh, maybe Joe knows which one it is, I don't know, but it was brought up to me that the, the, the grading uh, that was supposed to be done in order to keep the dugout from being from being flooded uh, wasn't wasn't done or it still gets flooded because it's higher you follow what I'm saying quality assurance uh, and and subsequently the, the water just sits in there still you know the, these types of things that were supposed to be corrected I mean I, I had no intention of bringing this up I I uh I mean, if you talk to most baseball people, the fields are exactly like they were prior to spending $500,000, with the exception of getting the portable mounds, which was nice. Mm -hmm. Aside from that, um, you know, I, I even sent pictures in after the fields were done mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, you would see a lot of the runoff. Anytime there was rain, the dugouts would be filled with three bucket, five-gallon buckets full of sand mm. that haul washed into the, mm. the dugouts. Um, and after the immediately after the renovations, that did not it improve It was resolved. Um, now, I was told that that was going to be fixed as part of the ADA changes, which maybe I just didn't see how that was had anything to do with one or the other. Um, but I mean, I think it, it's a moot point at this point. I think the argument was made that, you know, you need to use the right stuff. And from the get go, you need to have the right people maintaining the fields or you're really not gaining anything. Um, now I would say that's not the case for seven district, seven district, the smaller fields were really just practice fields. So the improvements there were great. They got fences, you know, which clearly you could play games. Um, so aside from the mounds, I can at least speak for seven district, you know, and especially fifth district, you really don't notice much of a difference at all or that the fields were even Renovated, to be truthfully honest. Um, so, to your point, Don, are you are you requesting? Is there any quality assurance after things have been completed? Well, on a part of the on a part of the agent's well, department. Yeah, every everything is the perception of the person that's looking at it. Okay, as mm -hmm, to whether mm -hmm. there's an improvement or not. It's right? true. So, it's true. Uh, I, I don't. It, it is. I don't. I don't want to put anybody, in, myself or anybody else, in a position of micromanaging what kind of job this guy did of course. or is doing. You follow me? But there's there's a lot of discontent and criticism out there. I mean, and and to hide it is is wrong. You know. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I don't. I don't know. Uh, you know how much time this contractor has, and uh, you know as to what's going on and everything, but. You know, these little, I mean, you know, you, you go to have a ball game and then you've got to start cleaning out a dugout <laughs> well, you know, yeah. before you have it. It's, it's not, it's, you know, it's not a good experience to have happen, you know, these types of things when, when it, you know, should have been done, you know. Well, uh, and I think that, an example. you know, and, you know, part of the planning talk, we talked about the need for fields. And, you know, I think originally when we were talking, an expectation of, <laughs> of maybe three or four days to do a field really turned out to, in many cases, in most cases, two weeks. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you're trying to plan, you know, organi you know your schedule, you know, that's a major impact to the adjustments that you have to make. I was shocked to find out that we're still renovating fields. I, I, I you know, with all the whole summer that, you know, passed, I, I'm shocked that, <laughs> that we're still going to bag it um, as, as having not been done yet. So I know that's going to have an impact for this fall. Um, but, you know, because. But you know, with, with every contract, there is that, that period of evaluation and performance you know you you fix something it gets done and then you have the feedback to that whom that contractor vendor whomever so that's the kind of feedback that the communities that are using these facilities need to provide to the agency therefore i mean even and i'll just say even if it's at well we can't use that vendor anymore because they did a horrible job they the agency needs to know that so um my comment i guess to 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 this community or whomever is let them know that okay we paid this this guy five hundred thousand dollars to fix this and we're still having this problem don't use them again that's the kind of feedback that the agency needs to have I, I'm, I'm and that's just my opinion and also you need to know who wrote the contract and if they knew what they were writing i mean who was involved in writing the contract it was just 
some of right. the right. so so valuation. So, so so because it is a moot point now. They because paid the money. Correct. They might have done yeah. no long, by there's the no contract. longer there's no longer the cards and letters come writing in the mail. So now we're talking about the emails go to who? Um, the the the, age, the de department. Right. Okay. Parks. Right, and, and again, it, they pay. The, we they paid for a service. They paid for a vendor to fix these things. The vendor didn't. The vendor didn't do a good job. Oh. Let the department know. Therefore, if this ever comes up again, they don't use that person. Well, and I or think they don't the, use that. I business. think the bigger frustration is this was kind of informed to the department a year before any of this even started. Um, that should be said as well. Yeah, I think that's a, that, that is a frustration. I think most people have moved on. Everybody's so busy, they work. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah. It's tough times. So we I, just want to play. But we you just know, want to so, work. I mean, I, I had no intention of even discussing this at all today, but I felt like since it came up, I, of course. I'm going to throw in my two But, cents. you know, again, th that's that's why we're here to, to, to speak to those issues. And, you know, because the, the they don't hear it. They may not hear it. They do hear it. They may not do it, but we're here to amplify it. The the improvements to the to the the baseball fields, they're not good. Don't use that vendor again. That's what we're here for to advocate that. And and, and I'll take it a further than baseball. Uh, yeah. Just like the communication plan, it says in there very clearly. When you as board members get complaints from the citizens, you're encouraged to forward them to me so I can forward them to the correct personnel in the department to address them. When you don't forward that information, we're not aware. That's and right. we can't do anything to take care of it. Um, so that that's baseball, but that's everything. Yep. The, that light that you're talking about that fell down, that there's an emergency. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can always be that point of contact for you guys to forward people to in the community. I know who it needs to go to. They don't need to try to figure that out. I will. Um, obviously, now, if you know off the top of your head because of the circumstance, you can feel f free to forward them to that person. Right. But I'm always that in between for those kind of things. Right. So when you get those words, when you're hearing that, forward it to me. All right. <clears throat> Be you, careful. you guys do have your phone number and everything on the website. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not a hard, yeah, it's correct. not really hard correct. for the citizens right. to figure out how to get a complaint there. Exactly. So, I mean, my, my wife used to tell me, be careful. Got one more wife. item, uh, everyone. <laughs> So um, we do have one more item. I just where are we? Where are we with the restrooms? Um, um, so yes, I. I know I'm pretty certain I told you guys before, you know, this is state property. It's not um, county property. So in order to do any of the um, anything on that property, major renovations, you needed to go through DNR. So I did submit the request to DNR um, with all of the suggestions for the restrooms and did get that approval back from them this month. So that's great news. Um, the contractors are working on, I believe Roy's already gotten a quote for the for the restroom facilities, um, but it will be tur turnkey through that contractor who will do all the permitting. Um, so from from the step one all the way through through completion. So um, obviously the next step would be the purchase order being cut um, once that quote is processed through the system, and then they'll start the permitting process. So is this this is Chancellor's run, correct? Correct. And and as of right now, the only the pads are for site one and site two in the preliminary draft that you gave yes. us? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there any plans to put them anywhere else? Not in not okay. in this cycle, no. Okay. Okay. And given the fact, um, if we take like an average of how long it takes to get permits and things like that, when do we think these bathrooms would be operational? I don't have any answer for you on that. <laughs> There's too many variables that could throw it. I'd love to tell you this fall. That's not even a Because we chance. have been asking, asking, well, asking, but yeah, that's true. We understand. It, it should be a little bit um, faster of a permitting process than, say, uh, Chapsico Park, where we were digging our own well and septic. This is tying into Metcom services that are already there. Um, but okay, gotcha. At this point, I don't have a good estimate for you. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, so we will go around the horn really quick. I don't know if you still want, if we still wanted to have final comments limited to two minutes. Pardon? Final comments limited to two minutes. Yeah. Uh, one, I, I, <clears throat> one thing I would like to give a heads up on uh, a question. <laughs> Uh, for for new business and uh, for the next cycle. Yes, sir. Uh, 
I guess the question, Ms. Bishop, when the the ticket sales that we have, like the King's mm -hmm. Dominion and all that kind of stuff, That's right. do we receive any kind of commission off of selling those tickets or anything? I don't have the answer for that, and I, and I don't think we've sold those in, since prior to COVID. I don't think they're back in the office. Oh, okay, oh, okay. I was going to say, are we? I think we're because the list okay. is extremely there was some, long. There were some changes. <laughs> I'm, I'm vendor I, vendor sales. I don't really know um, the details of it, but. Um, well, we can it's been quite some time since we sold those tickets in the office. Mm -hmm. I guess that'll be that'll be an email. Can we send you an email to follow up on that? Joe, are you okay? Would you like to have some comments? Yeah. So uh, oh, sorry, I didn't. Well, no, I would just end with you know I, I you know I, I don't want to sound critical. I know a lot of things sound critical. So um, you know, and I think this has been said for a long time. It's it's mm -hmm. not so much the staff because I think the staff that I've worked with and that we've worked with with Recreation Parks does a phenomenal job because it's such a small staff that does so much. Yes. So, you know, I want to make clear that it's it's not a question of what the people are doing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they are doing the best they can like in many, you know, places you need more people and that's a common thing in many many industries at this point. So, mm -hmm. um, with with the amount of resources and, and manpower they have, they do a phenomenal job. Um, but that doesn't mean that we can't point out things that people that's want right. to see improve. So, that's not necessarily a criticism of the staff um, that's there. It's just a criticism of you know maybe needing more staff Process. to help and assist with some of these things. So mm -hmm. I'll finish with that. No, I don't. I don't think it's a matter. I, uh, I, I don't look at anything <clears throat> that's being said to any one of the members as being criticizing any part of the department. I don't take that at all. The, our our task is to is to help the mission along mm -hmm. in relationship to the community and and uh, I. Uh, whatever perception might be left out there is not a perception that we can at least from this member, and I don't believe from any member is, is the perception we want to give to to okay. staff. Uh, people come to work to do a good job, given given the proper tools to work with and direction, they're going to do a good job. And I, I think everything that said, Joe said is is very appropriate for all all the staff. So. Greg, do you have any comments? Yes, uh, the camps, the summer camps, the summer programs. We're rarely, I got a lot of good comments on those. The summer, the summer programs are awesome. Everybody loves them. The, you guys do a lot with, like they said, it's minimal staff at a, at a minimal cost. And I think uh, the citizens need to remind, remind themselves that we're getting good product from a good group of people that work hard for us. Uh, before you pass it on to the other side of the aisle, uh, if, if I may, I had a couple other remarks to make, if that's all right. Thank you no, very much. Sorry, that's not all right. First of all, I'd like to talk about the trashing of the parks. Today I was, oh. uh, I went to uh, oh, uh, sir? Chances Run Regional Park. So you, you actually were allotted some time to provide your comments, so now we're going to move on to other members. If you'd, like, if you'd like to add that to next month's agenda, we absolutely can. Certainly. <laughs> Glenn, would you have some comments? No, I just think tonight we had a great discussion, uh, and the public heard it from us mm -hmm. on, on what we discussed. So. Veronica, do you have any comments? Uh, just that tonight I think we learned that if the citizens do have any concerns, that you know the department is more than willing to hear them, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I think that folks need to speak up. And, mm -hmm. and reach out to one of us, reach out to the department, things like that, so that we can make our, our recreation and parks facilities the best they can be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, as chair, I don't have any comments. Um, I, I actually know what uh, Mr. DeGraves is going to speak about, so I'll yield my two minutes to Mr. DeGraves. Thank you. Uh, two minutes. Today I was at the uh, uh, regional park uh, to pick up some paperwork and uh, uh, actually, uh, I couldn't. I couldn't believe what I was seeing in relationship to somebody or a couple of somebody's just looked like they emptied their car on a parking lot. Uh, I, th I think that's absolutely terrible, and I think that that all of us uh, should realize that our, our parks are beautiful, and uh, everybody should take care of taking care of uh, trash and rubbish uh, properly in containers or take it back home with you. Uh, last but not least, uh, we're coming up uh, into the holiday. Uh, enjoy our beaches, boat safely, and uh, have a good uh, 
What holiday is it? <laughs> All right. Is there a motion to adjourn Memorial, the meeting? Memorial Day. <laughs> Can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Paper Day. Excuse me. I motion to adjourn the meeting. Is there a second? I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you very much for watching. If you did watch, have a good evening. Thank you.